Hello everybody, Ian Robson here from our edition of Idaho. <laughs> anyway, I've got a couple things going on today. As you can see, it is 1900 hours and we're still continuously continuing on with our harvest here. We got the New Holland, he's doing the corn harvest. Uh, this is over on field 24, if you recall from the previous episode, that's where we kind of left off. Didn't quite finish the field, but we got a good chunk of it done so far. And uh, we have our overloader working right here in the case. Now, the funny thing about this overloader that I discovered from the pre, well, from playing, is that it does do everything it's supposed to do except for unfold the pipe. Not sure about that. I'm sure I could probably fiddle around with the code to get it to work properly. Uh, but for whatever reason, course, but just does not want to unfold the pipe, which is a bit unfortunate. Uh, but that's the way it goes. It's not a huge deal. Uh, I, used to have to, I used to have to keep an eye out for this right here, this message. Uh, has reached its overload point, basically. Otherwise, it's pretty good. It doesn't uh, fold it back in either, so you have to unfold it and fold it back in. But other than that, it's pretty good. Uh, as you can see, we still have $10,000. Uh, $10,000 just chilling out there for the time being. I'm not sure what to do with that. Well, not entirely true. I have come to the realization that this map is pretty darn big and I'm going to need a fuel bowser. Uh, so I was looking through some fuel bowser options and I picked up the Chieftain fuel bowser from NA Modding. I don't remember using this, or I probably have used it and that's been a long time since I've used it. So I figured, what the heck, might as well, uh, might as well use it this time around. Let me just fold this pipe back in. The silly thing about this pipe is that once it, uh, if you leave it unfolded, it will conflict with the pipe of the combine, so that's what I discovered at least. Anyhow, so let's go ahead and get that fuel bowser. It's only three and a half grand or so, which isn't too bad. And let's just get the shop to deliver it. Excellent. And let's hop into this guy right here and fill that up with fuel because that combine is going to need fuel in a second and it's going to take a lot longer for me to drive the combine back here than it is to drive this truck over there. So anyhow, so we need to do that. And let me show you the bales of straw in a second here. Ah, I haven't seen this. I don't remember using this ever actually. It's been around for a long time. I just don't remember using it. I probably did at one point. Take a quick little look at it. That's probably a bit high for it. Just a wee bit. Um, but it looks like it'll work. Um, yeah, that's pretty sweet, actually. There's no interaction with on the outside. No, I didn't think so, but... No! Ah, gets the job done, I guess. Anyhow, let's go grab some fuel for that, uh, for that guy there. Alright, I believe the fuel's down here. So luckily our truck can move around about 70, 80 clicks an hour, so... Pretty darn fast. That looks so silly. We'll fill out the truck, and then if we drive four, we should be able to refill the trailer. There we go. It holds quite a bit of fuel, actually. I think it's like 400. Is it more? No. It holds 980 liters, which is quite a lot, actually. It's more than I thought it was. Uh, don't drive through the fence. This is where having a steer will probably be nice. Also, I got the homemade tractor. He's just currently doing uh, the cultivating on this field with our big Vicon right here. This thing's a beast. I didn't realize how big it was. It's just long. Like, it's not very wide, to be honest with you, but it is pretty uh, pretty big. It's actually a really nice uh, cultivator. It's got some good animation in it. If you want, look closely, you can see the uh, the discs moving there on the front and the back. Even on the, uh, the end part right here, you can see it spinning, which is pretty darn cool, if you ask me. Anyways, he's almost finished, and then we'll be able to seed that field. Um, one of the things we do need to remember is that there is wither on this map. Uh, so, let me just... So, 25 is ready to be harvested as well. 8 is ready to be harvested. Uh, 35, 36, 16, 1, 13. So, we still have a few fields that need to be harvested yet. So, um, I don't think I'm going to plant this field right away. And that's because I want it to be like you know somewhat ready at the same time. Well, I guess it doesn't really matter, but we'll have to think about that. Anyways, where's our truck here? All right, let's go give that combine a little bit of fuel. Yeah, this probably looked a bit better if it wasn't so high. Uh, when you have a jacked up truck like we do here, um, that's probably one of the problems you run into. But 
It's funny, so often you see, uh, I've seen a lot of farmers complain about uh, younger kids getting their trucks jacked up like this, uh, and then it becomes kind of a useless truck. So like situations like this, where the actual hitch itself doesn't, uh, is a little high and you're kind of ruining the trailer uh, sort of thing. Am I going the right way? Yes. Uh, you're kind of like ruining the trailer by having only the, only the back wheels on the road there. Stuff like that, like being able to put stuff in the back of the truck is a lot more difficult when uh, uh, when you have a high truck like this. So, anyhow, let's go get that combine a little bit of fuel. Yeah, a lot of people are really pleased about this map so far. Uh, a lot of people are uh, really liking this the the uh, choice of vehicles and whatnot. So I'm really pleased about that. Happy you guys are happy, I guess. Um, I guess that's way how you'd say that, but I'm happy you're happy is what I'm trying to say. Anyhow, let's just drive straight out to the combine there. We'll stop him in his tracks. Give him a little bit of fuel. I'm not sure what the, uh, the hitbox on this particular fuel bowser is, but I'm assuming it's big enough so that this thing can actually, if I drive close enough to it, it should be able to, yeah, there he goes. Is not gonna... There we go, we'll do it that way then. Let him do that. Fill up there a little bit. Yeah, so that's the problem you run into in situations like this when your truck is jacked up a little bit. It's not crazy high, but it's high, definitely high enough for that to become a problem. Anyhow, uh, where's our other... This guy... You can just drive now. Might as well empty it while we're just chilling out here. Where's the other tractor? I don't know, not this one. This, yeah, this one right here. I don't think I have this in a group. Let's put it in group seven. No, let's put it in group four. Anyways, I, put, I brought the farm all over here. Uh, put a, as you can see, a, a weight on the back. Back's actually really heavy for this tractor, I imagine, so I don't need that much weight, but. Um, Here's all these straw bales. Uh, they don't unload very nicely from uh, our trailer, unfortunately, so I'm a little sad about that. They don't uh, unload nearly as nicely as the Heston bales do, um, but they do unload, so that's good to know. Uh, although we do have uh, this other random problem where we can't do anything with these straw bales at the moment. Uh, we don't have a mixing station or anything. Can I actually roll these away? Oh, sweet, look at that. There we go. You probably could roll a four foot bale in real life if it was flat. Um, it just seems silly that I'm able to do that. I don't know how much these would weigh. They're straw bales, so they're probably lighter than uh, Sprint. Uh, they're probably lighter than, there we go. Lighter than um, silage bales, for example. You can't even, trying to move a silage bale is just ridiculous. With your, I don't think, you probably could do it if you had a couple guys, but I suppose I could use this straw bale. Uh, that's from the Heston big bale back. Anyways, uh, so we have those farm those bales of hay there, straw, sorry, uh, but we can't do anything with it yet. So let's take a quick peek as to what we can get to help us out. Uh, what would be, that is a little, that's just for straw, that's not gonna help us at all. What about, no, neither of those. One of these, I guess, would be our best bet. The Keverlin Diet Feeder, or the... You know what's cool about this company? I, did, I discovered this is a Norwegian company originally. I was talking to Nor the Warrior the other day, and we were... I asked him how to say that properly. It's like Keverland, or something like that. Uh, it doesn't, doesn't roll off the tongue. <laughs> Let me just say that. So we need 25 grand for that? Ouch. 25 grand. We probably... We, bought, we got that loan out last time as well. Hmm. Not cool. Is he full? Yes, he's full. Let's move this truck out of the way then. There we go. Took uh, quite a bit of fuel to fill that thing up, actually. Actually, this fuel Bowser is not <laughs> not actually big enough to fill some of the bigger combines, believe it or not. Um, some of those bigger combines um, that we have are just enormous in comparison. I'm just going to leave this truck here with the fuel Bowser. Might as well fill this truck up because it's a fuel hog too. And we should take this to the uh, 
to our silos. Excellent. Yeah, so I think what we need to do is, uh, hmm. I feel like we need like a semi or something because this truck is, it works. Because we can carry 50,000 50, liters with this, which, you know, seems to be working well enough. And like, I think I mentioned this last time, but the rear wheels on this have like cultivation on them. So when you, when you drive around with it, uh, you don't actually cultivate the ground. Strangely enough, I discovered so. I don't know why it does that, but it does. So, ugh. can't handle the inside of that thing. Uh, this, luckily, this doesn't do that weird thing the same uh, as the Aguius Tenius thing did. As you can see, I gave our cows a little bit of wheat and barley, which is actually corn, as you can see up here in the Animal HUD. A lot of people ask me about what that mod is. It's called Animal HUD. Um, so we have that up there, and they still need some silage, and they also need some TMR. Oh, they need water too. Oh man, I don't think we have any. Uh, do I don't? Uh, they might. We might have some. Let's just take a quick peek. I, we might have some cheap water trailers. I'm not sure. That one, and what else do we have? Mm. This one, I guess, that's a bit on the pricey side. That would be nice, but I don't think people would appreciate that's a Russian truck. Trying to stay away from non North American brands, if I can at least. Uh, that does water and milk. That could work, I guess. This tanker could work if I had 9,000. Yeah, not many other options, I guess. This is the other fuel truck. We'll probably move towards that um, eventually because it carries a lot more fuel. But for the time being, we can't afford it. Uh, the water truck. Mm, it's not really worth it. All right, let's move this guy forward here. And I think what we're going to do is we're going to take a load of wheat. Uh, it's top of the hour. It's 1,900 hours, like I said. Uh, it's top of the hour, so I'm thinking we're going to sell a few loads of wheat because we have quite a bit of wheat co-op. I think something I discovered on this map, everything is the same price it looks like. Uh, let me just show you in a second. I have to select. I can't just go under the silo and, and under like a specific silo. I have to go up and select what I want. This is one of the strange things about this map. You have to... Uh, It'll show up in the HUD there in a second. So there it is. It says filling wheat. So then I can I go underneath and then I start filling this up. Wow, that's way faster than I thought it was going to be. Uh, but it's kind of cool because you, it's only one silo system. I guess that's what you would probably have in real life. Something like that at least. I'm not sure. Whoa, 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 whoa. whoa. Get out of there. Something along those lines. Um, but anyways, wheat. Hanson, it's 326. Train Depot, it's 326. And wheat, oh, 338 at the Buzz Budweiser facility. Where the heck is the Budweiser facility? Uh, BGA. Does it, is it going to say here? Garden Center. Oh, it must be the brewery, so it's way up there. Alright, let's take a load up there, because we do need a little bit of extra money. If we want to get a water truck or something for our animals, we're going to need that. So we need to head north on the map. Alright, let's get up there. Eventually we'll probably use course play for this type of stuff, but for the time being... So one of the funny things, I'll, and it's only going to be, I guess, one course per area. Well, I guess that's not true. I guess it'll be double, depending on where you store your grains. Because each, if you remember from the start, each um, each silo is separate. So you need to, if you you know collect stores on one side and then the other side, you'll have to uh, set up individual courses for that. So not terribly difficult, but just an extra thing you have to do. All right, so. The one thing I really like about this map is there's stuff. It's not just flat with nothing. Um, that was one of my, one of the detractors from the All-American Farm. I like the, the farm itself, but there's like no town, for example. Um, 
Yo, McDonald's, apparently. I like stuff like that, so... Uh, there's just, uh, just little things that, uh, that they didn't have, which was a bit sad, so... Which is one of the reasons why I really like this map, because it does have those little things in here. Uh, stuff like, you know, oats and soybeans and th things along those lines, so... And, like, driving anywhere wasn't interesting, it was just flat. But here, you drive, you get some nice rolling hills. Nothing too crazy, like, hilly, but, you know... Um, sugar factory... I guess this is the same way we need to go for the brewery? I wonder why I didn't say sh brewery as well, but... Hmm. And one thing I have to admit, I really like their signs. Oh, interesting. Wheat and barley. Uh, this is wheat. Individual cell points. That's kind of cool. What if I can get both these on at the same time? Maybe. Yeah, look at the money rolling in. Nice. So while that's doing that, let's take a quick look at potential trucks. Uh, I want to try and get a truck for... I don't know, an old school truck. But a lot of the trucks I see coming out are newer. So like 2000 and... Uh, high, well, 2000 and newer, I guess. It's a Mercedes. Scania. Not going to get a Scania on this map, that's for sure. Uh, so yeah, there aren't many that uh, are old. I think I only have the one Peterbilt that's really old. I guess this one could be considered older. Doesn't have a year on it, but it definitely looks older. This one's just ridiculous. Uh, it might be okay in this map, though, because it's not too hilly. If you have lots of hills, this truck does not perform well. If you ever watched Dirt Tebbers, he did uh, a Let's Play on, I think he called it Colorado, which was Duke's farming map, and he used this truck. And you'll see it bouncing all over the place. If you go back and watch that, it's an older series. Uh, where are they here? International. I think that is 2000 or somewhere in that area. I, I, I think we only have the one Peterbilt. That's the older one. Now that I think about it. Some people are saying I should have started with a truck. Well, this is 82, so technically I could get this Kenworth. I do like that Kenworth, too. That's not too bad. And this 379, no idea. Doesn't say. Flatbed, W900. That is not a newer one. Or is a newer one? I don't know. Uh, the Mack truck. Oh, that's 1977. That's a possibility as well. A bit more expensive, though. Definitely like it when it gets dirty. That's the one, D one problem with that particular truck, at least. What else do we have here? Let's go to the end. Western Star, that's 2003. Uh, this Kenworth's 2007. And this Peterbilt is... I guess, it's, I guess really, this is the Peterbilt. I, sh I should really get this one. Because it's 1954, 1977. Oakland, California. 67,000. So we probably could get enough for that. But that means we do need that... And we need a trailer for it as well. So that's going to be 100 grand, I guess. Hmm. We probably could. Considering it's got 20 there, or we got 10 from that. I think that's what it was. We got 10 grand just from that little trip there. I think we'll be able to do it just fine, I imagine, at least. And what I can do is I can use this truck still. That's a tight turn. I can use this truck still for stuff like uh, unloading vehicles in the, uh, do what I'm doing right now with overloading and whatnot. Or I could use it for selling, something like that. Either one would work. Alright. Let's see. Where's our... I always forget where the actual farm is. Well, not really. It's not too difficult. Once you see the, start seeing the silos, you know you're close to it, basically. Otherwise, it's like, ooh, where's this? Where's this? I don't know. That's what I discovered with Spring Hill. It's uh, all the time. It's like, I have no idea where the heck I'm going. This makes perfect sense to me because it's straight. You know, there's northeast, west, and south roads, and that's it, basically. There's nothing, like, that goes in any other random direction, so. And it makes sense. The only thing that doesn't make sense is the fact that it's in miles an hour. We don't use that here in Canada. We use kilometers. Which is the reason why I have this in kilometers down here. Because that makes sense to me in miles an hour. 
There, like, there's very few things I can relate to easily in miles an hour. Uh, zero to sixty is about. Well, I think it's what it's. I think that's the end. The gist of it. Because zero to sixty is like zero to hundred kilometers, and that's as far as I can remember. Otherwise, everything else is. I don't know. I remember driving in the states. Whoops, where am I going? I remember driving in the states once. It was really funny because it was like, where, where am I going? Like, how fast am I supposed to be going here? And I was like, it was like 35 miles an hour. I'm like, how much is that in kilometers? I have no idea. Stuff like that. It was pretty funny. I didn't drive in the states for very long. It was just there for, uh, at a wedding. So, thankfully. All right. How is the case doing here? He is currently slipping. So this is what happens when you don't put the pipe down. And apparently I forgot to do that, which is annoying, but... That's the one annoying part about this. I'm assuming if this one does it, they are all going to do it. Because I believe they're all made by the same person, so... But, that doesn't look too bad. 18 ton overloader. Looks about right. An old school tractor like that. 150 horsepower tractor. That looks like it could be... Should be able to do that, I suppose. Looks kind of cool. I wish those lights looked better, but... When you're actually in the tractor, it's not so bad. That's kind of cool. Anyhow, let's go back to our GMC here. Ah, how much money are we going to make from this? So we made about, what, 10... What was it? Loan details. What am I looking for? This. Yeah, so we made. Well, not 35, but something like that. It's crazy. I was driving around a while back, and uh, guy had a whole bunch of bins like this. And, like, brand. It looks like they were all brand new bins, and they were all brand new grain dryers, too. I was like, wow, he must have dropped a ton of cash on that. Uh, but the, there's just uh, that's something that's starting to happen a lot a bit more these days. A lot of farmers are going uh, the store drought because the prices fluctuate so much. Uh, like, like like this year, for example, with soybeans, like soybean prices have been all over the place, uh, up one day, down the next. But that's pretty normal, mind you. But uh, if you're waiting for a good time, like right now, like obviously, like right now, I think when I looked last looked, the prices were down because I think Brazil just had their huge soybean harvest. Uh, but prices will go down for a little while and they go back up before the harvest, I think is how it works, uh, in North America, and then it'll go drop down after the harvest. But if you can store your own soybeans, you know, during the course of the winter when there's no, not you can't harvest anything, then you can capitalize on those high prices, but it doesn't always work that way, right? If you're a small farmer and you can't store your beans or whatever your wheat, Oops, where am I going? Oh no, it's the right way still. <coughs> Excuse me. I if you not if you can't if you're a big farmer, you obviously you can store it to a certain degree, but if you're a small farmer, it doesn't work out so well, so. So this is what I think uh, the modern American farm should have been like. So it has field has all fences all around it, but they should have been you could have been a, should have been able to drive through them. And I think you could do that easily enough, now that I know more about Giants Editor, but originally I just took the the fences out just to prevent um, to, to prevent the annoyance, basically. But now I probably could make it so there, so you could drive through them. There we go. All right, so we could. I think the Peterbilt's what we're gonna aim for, maybe, uh, or maybe the Kenworth. I don't know. We could just get this Bull North Kenworth. That's definitely an older school model. Um. Which is a possibility. The only downfall is that I don't think 5400s a uh, a reasonable price, really. Or I could go for the B model Mac too, I suppose. It's 1966. And actually, we have enough money for that now. Excellent. Look at that. All right, so yeah, it's about 10 grand roughly per load. It looks like. Which isn't too bad, I suppose. 
Uh, actually, you know what we can buy now? We can buy the mixer, which is a good thing to buy. Uh, not the mixing station, but the... Uh, um, the actual mixing... Whatever it's called. I can't remember what it's called. The Vicon thing. Feed mixer. I don't know why it's escaping my memory right now. But yeah, we can buy the Vicon feed mixer now. Uh, which would be a good little purchase, actually. That we can actually feed our... Or give our cows a little bit of straw. And we also need something to cut. And, well, oof, that's true. We do need a tether. And we do need a rake. Uh, because we don't have that right now either. Hmm. We need a lot of things, apparently. A lot more than I thought we did. Unfortunately, but... Yeah, this is a really nice looking map. I can't, I can't get over how nice this is. Speci uh, especially because it's a North American map. You see a lot of nice European maps, but not as many nice North American ones. So it's good to see that there are some people out there who care about making North American maps. And there actually was a Canadian map released not too long ago. Uh, Greg let me know about that one. It's a agricultural, it's a Canada agriculture, I think it's called. And if my memory serves correctly, it's based on the Canadian Agricultural Museum, which is based in Ottawa, Ontario. And it's kind of interesting because the the actual it's an experimental farm, and the farm itself is like right in the middle of the city, essentially. So it's kind of cool. All right, there we go. And if we look at our stores here, how much do we actually have? Uh, we still have 330,000 liters of wheat, so we're not really hurting for that at all, which is good. All right. So what we'll do is we'll sell. Oh, that guy's gonna be full this time around. I'm sure of that. I wonder if I could. I'm sure I could fix that. I don't know what the scripting would be there or what it needs to be. Maybe David Oldfields know. David, perhaps you know. Let me know if you know. That would be cool. I'm sure it's just like a simple little thing. Like, maybe in specializations it needs the overlord specialization, maybe? Maybe? I don't know. I'll have to look into it. But this guy's definitely full. So I need to finish off this last little run here. Uh, before I do that, let me just buy the feed mixer. Uh, before I forget about it. Because we need that regardless. And because we only have beef cows right now, I'm just going to take it to the beef cow farm. I could get either one, the big one or the small one. Actually, I'm going to run into a problem. Let me just look. Because the tractor we have up there is only a 61 horsepower tractor. So we should get the small one then. Because it's not too far off. I think it was like 70 horsepower you needed, so... 75, so yeah, uh, might struggle a little bit. So maybe I'll have to move it, I'll have to get, maybe get another tractor up for there or something. There we go, got the feed mixer, finally. So now we can actually give our uh, our cows a little bit of straw. All right, so this has been apparently a, an episode of selling grain because we're going to do 50,000 liters at a, at a time, which is not terrible, I guess, considering. But it doesn't, it doesn't feel like very much, let's just say that. I guess I'm used to dropping off 70,000 liters worth of grain, but... Uh, 50,000 liters. I guess it's better than, you know, on a smaller map. Like, yeah, I guess I have to put this into perspective, because, like, if you look at the European-styled map, where you might get 50,000 liters off all your crops, or all your fields, as opposed to just from one field. Like, we got 330,000 liters from one field, so... And it is on hard, too, just in case you're wondering. Pretty cool. I don't, I don't think I've ever seen this type of setup. I know, I don't think so. The truck by itself, yes, maybe, but not the, uh, not necessarily the truck with the dump pump, whatever you want to call it, the trailer on the back. Luckily, all the lights are green for us, too. Look at that. Green lights all the way. <laughs> not that it really makes a difference in this game, but... Apparently we have green lights all the way. Excellent. All right, so we're gonna sell this last load and then I'm gonna stop the episode there, I think. 
made some good progress. Maybe another, maybe our ten thousand. Maybe what we should look then next episode is another tractor, or well, moving one of the tractors that we have down here up there. Because right now we have our homemade tractor. That, that thing's gonna probably need to move around a little bit, I imagine. Uh, for cultivation purposes, because our current cedar does not cultivate at all, so. Alright, let's take a look around this Budweiser facility. Oh, what's this? Why are these here? Oh, I think it's just there for looks. It doesn't actually do anything. It doesn't even say if it's not full or not. That's pretty cool still, though. Hmm. Let's move forward. So we're at twenty-three thousand. Uh, we could. Let me just take a quick peek at what other tractors we could technically get. Remember, we're trying to go for old school tractors, so we could get one of these. Another one of these cases. They're a bit pricey, though. Uh, what year is that? Doesn't say. Probably too new, anyways. Uh, but the, where's the other one I have that's older? This 5300, I think it is. Doesn't say that. Uh, 996, so still too new. I'm trying to go through the progression of the ages, right? Could get a farm all, but they don't have enough horsepower either. No fence. I could get a Ford. You do tend to see Ford tractors, but again, uh, that one's kind of in their range. 106 horsepower. Ford's and these ones, maybe these ones too. Uh, 94, that's a possibility. Uh, what else do we have? That's an Irish style tractor, that's for sure. IH, we could get one of these. They're a bit on the pricey side, but they do have the appropriate amount of horsepower. Uh, what else is there? I don't think we have any old John Deere. Technically, we have this old John Deere we could get. And that's not. That is a bit low, but not crazy low, and it's the right period, too. But I'd like to come in better. Or the other what tractor we already have, that's about that horsepower. This one is... That uh, might fall into the right category, the 4000 4, series, 4955, I'm not sure. I just don't like the way it sounds, which is the reason why I don't buy it. Uh, and I think that's it, I don't think we have any other older John Deere tractors. Because that's newer. I think the rest of them are near, yeah. Hmm. Massey Ferguson. We could get one of these Masseys, actually. Uh, which one? I, I just picked up a new one, but I just didn't put it in the folder, I guess. But uh, it's 108. Oh, it's a possibility. We could get a uh, Massey Ferguson. You do see Massey Ferguson's out here. How much horsepower do these got? These have 135. So we could get this, actually. This is a nice little one because it's quick. And it would work well for mowing up there, too, now that I think about it. Hmm. Maybe a Massey. I'm not avoiding John Deere. I just don't uh, have very many John Deere tractors that are good in the old school times, like, you know, 1970s, 80s. Anyhow. Oh, that's a good point, though. Now that I think about it, that tractor's probably a little too new. This, that's the hardest part, actually. Trying to find older styled tractors, that makes it slightly more interesting. Uh, let's take a quick little peek at that Massey one more time. 99, yeah, it's too new. Uh, that one... 2001, yeah, these are all going to be too new. Hmm. Anyhow, I'll think about it. So I have 31 grand now, so we could get another tractor. Let's go up and check out the terrace, whatever you want to call it. You can tell I live in a French area when you say something like terrace. Jeez patio, whatever you call it up there. I don't know, that's what I think it is. Anyhow, that's it for today, folks. I'm going to stop mumbling about random stuff or chit-chat. Anyways, my name is Ian Robson. I will talk to you guys later. <laughs> this has been Idaho Map, and you guys have yourselves a good day.